We have two objects for you today, and both of them are to do with doing science in Antarctica. Let's start with the obvious one first for me. Sure. And that is this flag. Mm. Let's have a look at this. You, you, do you want to unfurl this yeah. for me? Yeah, so this is uh, a flag from Halley Bay in Antarctica. Now the Royal Society had a base in Antarctica from 1956 for International Geophysical Year. Okay. So it went out there to, to study the region. And in 1956, as you can see from the label, it raised this flag. So they were down in Antarctica. They raised this flag for about a year yep. in the, the harsh winds of Antarctica. Indeed. And we can see it's really gone to town here. And this is what they came back with. That tells a story all of its own. We've got a map here, by the way. This gives you an idea of where they were down on the coast Indeed. there. So here's Halley Bay and uh, Penguin Leap, where the flag was flying, is marked right there. And you can see also here Emperor Bay. Now, Penguin Leap and Emperor Bay is a lovely segue to take us to this next object. What's in the box, Keith, as I like to say? Where well, Emperor Bay g gives us the clue, really, because this is an egg collected uh, on this 1950s expedition uh, from Halley Bay, and this is the egg of the Emperor Penguin. Wow. Now, I think uh, because this is exceptionally fragile, you should take this one out. Okay, so all those people at home who are currently running bets on when I will break something fragile, watch closely. Here we go, an Emperor Penguin egg. They've blown out what was in here before. So this is a hollow Emperor Penguin egg from the 1950s in Antarctica. And it might not be immediately obvious, but for someone like Keith, this is a real symbol of the perils of Antarctica. And it goes back a bit further than the 1950s to a real golden and dark age of exploring in Antarctica. Do you want to tell us about it? That's right. Well, uh, of course, the, the man most famously associated with Antarctica is Robert Falcon Scott, Captain Scott. Scott of Antarctica. Scott of the Antarctic, yeah. absolutely yeah. right. Now, he uh, was involved in several Antarctic expeditions, but the Terra Nova is probably the most famous one because, of course, that's where he met his end with, with his compatriots. However, on that same expedition, one of the scientific objectives that uh, they had was to gather emperor penguin eggs. Edward Wilson, who was uh, one of the mission's zoologists, was, was the man who really wanted these things. And of course, he died in the tent with Captain Scott after he had successfully collected three of these things on what was described later as the worst journey in the world. We must point out, these, this is an egg from the 1950s. Those three eggs from the famous Scott journey are elsewhere. In London. Indeed, they in are, the Natural History Museum. They are here in, Lon are here in London. Mm. But for you, so basically when you see penguin eggs, you think of Scott and that, that crazy, dangerous mission. It was truly, truly awful. And this is why they did that. And I'm betting even those people in the 1950s to get this penguin egg, they probably didn't have an easy ride of it. They didn't have an easy one ride, but at, at that stage, uh, Walt Disney was making movies in, in Antarctica, so things were just a little bit better by the 50s. So it really just shows you how in the course of a relatively short period of historical time, suddenly something which was originally tremendously difficult became relatively easy. I'll tell you what, we have the best job of all though, because we're here in a lovely warm room in the Royal Society. Indeed. Getting to look at it ourselves. And the people at home have it even better, because you don't even have to move off your chair and you get to see an emperor penguin egg. There you go. Perhaps most interestingly, we are reminded here that this is a standard yard, but only at 62.1 Fahrenheit. Temperature has to be absolutely exact to, to get it to measure precisely one yard. 